when I picked Nuno up at his hotel, he comes out without a guitar, and I thought, I guess we're not playing guitar. Nuno gets in the car and tells me, well, he never plays guitar in interviews. So I thought, okay, after two hours or so, I start handing Nuno one guitar after the next. Hey, check this out, check this out. And then he started playing, and we're just talking. So I thought, I'll just leave all this in. We're just having a freewheeling conversation. Check it out. Oh my God, dare I? But you know what I mean? Even like the, the what I was saying about like making stuff open and close. Yeah. From like so it feels like it's pulsating, whatever. So you know when you. I thought I'd hear Angus play that riff. I would. Got an oomph to it, dude. Yeah. Still swampy. It's got my buddy Dave that sets up my guitar sets them up. They play so well with the low Fuck action. Dude, the action. This is like the action that I'm always striving for, but I never get. I never get with the with with my guitar. Yeah. Because I, I sometimes I, I see like sometimes you know there's some guys like even on on Instagram and stuff that I watch that. They could literally effortlessly play without even like picking a fucking note and then doing all this stuff. And I'm like, I can't do that on my guitar. I right. have to earn every fucking note that I play. Yeah. Which is kind of cool in a way, but there's a part of me that's like, I'm tired of working so fucking hard to get something to happen. I'd love to, I'd love to, I should give you, give him my guitar to set up, see what he would do. Oh, yeah, my buddy Dave's a really good guitar player too. <laughs> Hamars that go yeah, down. Only an amp will do that too. fun to play that type of stuff on there. So it's just a regular one, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs>
I'd like to take a second to talk to you about this channel. This is actually Rick Beato 2. I've had it since the beginning of my main channel and many of you are not subscribed. As a matter of fact, 87% of the people that watch this channel regularly are not subscribed. So I encourage you to hit the subscribe button on this channel and on my main channel. This will help me get even more of my dream guests and help continue to grow both channels. Thank you. I thought he was doing all that, doing it at that speed, and I'm like, motherfucker. And then I see him, he's like, move, he goes. I'm like, okay. I love the way this sounds. Wow, something about that, you can hit it. Really hear the pick like that, you know. Oh, it sounds nice. Wow, I just can't believe how like even all the way through, like I haven't played any. All your guitars you've handed me have all been like looking down a fucking <laughs> like a football field. Me, I'm like, all right, this is easy. It's gonna get harder. It's getting harder. And harder. You know, like Are these these aren't stacked, right? No. Wow. You know, I used to always try to figure out, like, everybody thought he played up here. But it was like, why does it sound so It's only two strings, because he opened it, you know. But, you know, the first time being in a car and fucking, I mean, we, this is where you were talking about what songs like Hot for Teacher came on. I remember, like, being young and, Half a teacher came on the radio for the first. This is the first new thing off fucking, was it Diver Down? No, it was 1984. 1984. 1984. And, and, and you know, hearing the drums and me, all that stuff, and then he comes. Wait a second. What? Uh, Ted Templeman, Greg Bissonette was here, right? Yeah. And he called Ted Templeman. And because we were talking about uh, about the beginning of Hot for Teacher. So, so Ted's like, oh, let me call Ted Templeman. He gets him on the phone because yeah. you heard it was Eddie's. It's Lamborghini. So the, the beginning of Hoffer Teacher, everyone thought that maybe it was him tapping on boxes or whatever that they they mic'd it up, and turns out it's it's Eddie's Ferrari. It's Going his to muffler. The, no for kidding. For the first four seconds, and oh, then it yeah. it molds into the. It molds into the, the rotor. He, he got he got Greg yeah. Bissonette was here. He's a good friend of mine. He was yeah. playing on my drum set, and, and he, he's like, uh, "Well, let's just call Ted Templeman." And he calls him up. He gets him on the on speakerphone, and he and he yeah. said, "Yeah, he said, yeah, that's it's awesome." A, the freaking car. It's amazing. That's crazy. It just yeah. happened to sync up perfectly. Yeah. I actually played that drum that on drums once with Steel Panther. Wow. I did the fucking song. That's how much I love playing drums. Oh I knew God. that more than they, you know. I mean, I think I, know, I remember on the guitar. You know that one? Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Yeah. Was Yeah, it's been a while. That's the... What a great solo. Oh, my yeah. God. All from here to here, back down to here to here. It's like, he knew how to fucking, like, where was that coming from?
But think about it, with that fucking groove, who writes a solo to that fucking groove? You know, it's like, and it's like, all right, go. Like, and as clean as this, he was clean. That's the thing that he, nobody, I don't know, nobody. That's the thing that he subtly did, which was really fucking bizarre that nobody ever talks about is, you know, when you heard all the stuff that he was doing, you know, the, uh, was it the... No. Whatever. You know. All that stuff is heavy. It was a lot more saturated, but every album, it got cleaner. By the time you get to fucking 1980, like Diver Down, you know, the... It's, it seems heavy, but it was cleaner. By the time you got to fucking 1984, and you hear that, you literally, you hear the isolated tracks or anything with those, like, you know, that, that I teach you, it's cleaner than this. It is cleaner, that's it's right. It's fucking clean. It just got cleaner yeah. and cleaner and cleaner as it got later. And people don't do that. It's usually the other way it's around. It's usually the other way, It's usually yeah. the other way around because you need more help. But this dude is like getting, he's getting more into Helen Holsworth and all that area he was doing. So everything was getting a lot cleaner and just cleaner. But in my head, it was always. But it's not this. It's like it's almost like a clean, it's almost like a clean distortion. Not like, I don't even know how to describe it. It, it, it seems like it's going backwards, like from clean to distortion, not, not like taking saturation off of something. It's like a cleaner amp, which is really impressive because all that stuff is really was really, um, I don't know what the word, it's like, that's not easy to do with that, with that fucking, but you hear a lot more of the, almost Strat style, you almost hear more of like a Strat-y sort of guitar that you use playing. Yeah, those, those pickups on this don't sound like a Strat, they sound like stacked. Yeah. Like a stacked dude. combo. Well, I, I thought they were stacked, yeah. even when I'm doing this. Yeah, those are all single coils. That's single coil. I know, it's crazy, right? I forget what pickups those are. They're like a, like a 61 strap that you stick in front of pickups or something. Yeah, really great. Guitar set up like this, you just want to, you can't stop playing because they're just like, it's like, play me more.